Hello everyone, this video is over lesson number 15 where we'll be talking about parallel versus series connections and the power output of resistors in an electric circuit. The purpose of this video is to study the differences between parallel and series connections in electric circuits and to understand the power output generated by each resistor in an electric circuit. So make sure to go over the lesson objectives. Basically, you need to be able to identify parallel versus series connections from the schematic of the circuit and also from looking at real electric circuit. Also, you need to be able to identify those two different connections from the way the circuit operates. Also, you need to be able to compare and contrast the two connections in terms of the total current in the circuit, the resistance, the total resistance in the circuit, and how the voltage and the current distributes among the resistors. And also, you need to be able to compare and contrast the operation of the circuit if one of the resistors in the circuit got disconnected or broke down. Also, you need to be able to explain the voltage and the current distribution among the resistors in both connections using Ohm's law and the law of conservation of charge. And then on the power part of this lesson, you need to be able to identify the relationship between power current and voltage, power current and resistance, power resistance and voltage. Also, you need to be able to solve problems involving power in electric circuits. And you need to use the equation that we learned in lesson number 9 on how to evaluate the total energy consumption in kilowatt hour in electric connection in this case. Okay, now, as we know, any electric circuit is composed of several components. There is the power supply, which is the voltage source. There are the electric wires, which represent the conductors that furnish the path for the electrons or the charges to move through. And then uh, there is the purpose of the electric connection, which is the devices that we need to operate, or appliances in our home that we need to operate. Like here in our case, we are looking at light bulbs. There are two ways we can connect those three light bulbs. One is parallel connection, that you can see it here, where there is junction in the circuit at which the current will split, and then it will merge again on the opposite junction here to merge into the negative terminal and continue the cycle. Uh, then we have the other connection, which we call it series connection. And this is the series connection, where the light bulbs are connected in series. There are no junctions in the circuit. The current will not split. So the current that comes from the positive terminal of the battery will be the same current that will go through each resistor. There are no junctions. And then go back and so on. Now let's look at simulation here of series and parallel connection. I went ahead and uh, connected those three light bulbs in series as you see here, and also I connect the same light bulb in parallel. Those three light bulbs have different resistors. This one we set at 10 ohms, this one is 5 ohms, and this one is 20 ohms. And those same light bulbs are also connected in parallel. This one is the 10 ohms, this one is the 5 ohms, and this one is the 20 ohms. And the power supply here, I'm using 10 volts, and also using 10 volts in the parallel connection. So the two connections are using exactly the same voltage source and exactly the same resistor values. So let's look at the differences here. As you see here in the case of series connection, the total electric current is very slow. Although we have the same three resistors that we have here, here the current is very fast. The charges are moving fast, meaning the current is big, because as we know, Electric current is the rate at which the charges are moving. So you can see here the charges are moving fast, meaning the electric current is bigger in the case of parallel connection in contrast to the series connection. So that's our first observation. The other observation you might notice here, in the case of parallel connection, you can see the current, whenever it hits the junction, it will split. So the first split is at this junction, then the second split is at this junction, and then here it will continue its way then uh, the current that's coming from this light bulb will merge with, with the current coming from this light bulb. Then uh, we'll get the total current at this junction where it goes through the power supply and so on. Uh, while here the electric current will be the same to all the resistors. We can here measure the electric current using this ammeter here. So for example, we know the voltage is 10 volts and the resistors we have 10 5 and 20. And in the case of series connection, the total resistance of the circuit would be the, the algebraic sum of the three individual resistors. So the total resistance here would be 20 plus 10 plus 5, which will give you 35. So we know from Ohm's law that the electric current is equal voltage over resistance. So basically by the total voltage over the total resistance, we'll get 
the total electric current. So if you divide 10 by 35, this will give you around 0.29 amps. And that's what the current you see here. Now, is the current going to change at any point in the circuit? Let's look here. The current that goes through the first resistor is equal to the current that goes through the second resistor, equal to the current that goes through the third resistor. You see in all those cases, it's still 0.29, equal to the current that comes out, because charge is conserved. The charge that goes through the first resistor will be the same as the charge that goes through the other two. The current will be the same throughout. But you can see the total current is small, although the current will not split, but the value of the current is very small. Let's compare that to the parallel connection. Now we have the same power source, we have the same resistors, but let's look at the total current. Is it going to be 0.29? If we place the a meter here to measure the current, you can see it's 3.5. That's big difference. 0.29 and here's 3.5. That's more than 12 times bigger. And the reason current we know is inversely proportional to the resistance. In the case of series connection, the resistance would be the algebraic sum of the three resistors. But in the case of parallel connection, the total resistance of the circuit will be actually smaller than any individual resistors. In order to calculate the total resistance of the circuit, we have to take the reciprocal of the sum of all the reciprocals of the circuit. The total resistance will be basically 1 over 1 over 10 plus 1 over 20 plus 1 over 5, which will give you resistance that is smaller than any individual resistor. And for the physical science course, we don't need to know how to calculate total resistance. You just need to know that the total resistance of the parallel circuit is smaller than any individual resistors. And hence, the current is big. The total current is big. That's why we see the light intensity out of the three light bulbs that are connected in parallel far more intense than the intensity of the light bulbs in the case of series connection although they have the same resistance values and they are connected to the same voltage source, 10 volts in both cases. Now let's see what happens to the total current in the case of parallel connection whenever it enters a junction. So this is 3.5. You can see in this junction it will split into 2.5 going up and 1 amps going through this resistor here. Remember this is the 10 ohm resistor. And the 10 ohm resistor got 1 amp. Now, what do you think the current will be in the 5 ohms resistor? The second resistor here is 1 half the first one. Would it get also 1 half the current or double the current? What do you think, based on your understanding to ohm law? So, this one got 1 amp. This one will get 2 amps, exactly, because half the resistor, meaning it will take twice the current. Because resistance and current are inversely proportional when the voltage is set constant. And we'll see here that the voltage is constant in the case of parallel connection. Okay, now how about the biggest resistor? That's uh, the 20 ohm. How much will it get? And as you should guess it, since it's twice the resistance, it will get one half the electric current. So it gets 0.5 amps. But you can see here, 0.5 plus 2 plus 1 will give you the total current, which is 3.5 amps. So that's with regard to the current. You can see the current here will split in the case of parallel connection, while in the case of series connection, it will be the same. However, the total current is very small in the case of series connection, while it's very big in the case of parallel connection. Now about the voltage. So we'll pick up the voltmeter here. Now, as we mentioned here, the voltage across the power supply is 10 volts. Now, what do you think the voltage will be across each one of those light bulbs? Now, since there are no resistance between this point and this point, the voltage should stay the same. You see, the voltage will stay the same as long as you don't go through a resistor. So this will be also 10 volts. So the voltage across the light bulb here is 10 volts, which is equal to the voltage across the voltage source. You go to the second resistor, you can see the voltage is still 10 volts because we're not going through any resistor. And hence the voltage across the second light bulb is also 10 volts. The same thing across the third one. So what can we conclude? We can conclude that in the case of parallel connection, the voltage across the resistors in the branches of the circuit will be equal to the voltage across the voltage source. So the voltage will not split. The voltage is constant while the current is splitting. That's the case with parallel connection. Now about the series connection. We know in the case of series connection, the current will not split. Will the voltage also not split? Let's do the same thing here. You can see that the voltage was 10 volts here. Now here is zero because there is no resistor between two points. The voltage 
will be zero. Now across this one, there is voltage drop of 2.86 volts. So when the electric current goes through this 10 ohms resistor, there will be voltage drop used by this resistor equal to 2.86 volts. Now how about the voltage drop across this second resistor? How much would it be? This one is the 5 ohms. So this one has resistance one half the first one. And the voltage across the first one was 2.86. So what will happen when you cut the resistance by one half? Would the voltage drop across the smaller resistor be bigger or smaller? Again, remember Ohm's law. When the current is constant, what's the relation between voltage and resistance? So let's see here. If we measure the voltage across the second resistance, you can see it's one half the first one because it has one half the resistance. And we know in the case of Ohm's law, voltage and resistance are directly proportional when the electric current is set constant. So when you cut the resistance by one half, the voltage drop across this resistor will drop by one half. So the voltage used by this resistor is 1.43. Now how about the biggest resistance, this one here. You can see this, the biggest one will have four times the voltage because it's four times the resistance. This one is 20 ohms, while this one is 5 ohms. So it has four times the resistance, hence it has four times the voltage. Uh, so you can see in the case of series connection, the electric current is constant, but the voltage will split. And the voltage splits based upon the resistance. The bigger the resistance, the bigger the voltage across that resistance. And if you sum the individual voltages, this is 5.71, 1.43, which is the voltage across the second resistor, then add it to the voltage across the third resistor. If you add those three individual voltages, it will give you exactly the voltage of the power supply, which is... 10 volts. And again, that's because energy is conserved. Remember, voltage is energy per charge or work per charge, which is energy per charge. So that's basically the main differences uh, between series and parallel connections. To recap, in the case of series connection, the electric current will be the same through all the resistors, while the voltage will split based upon the resistance value. The bigger the resistance, the bigger the voltage. In the case of parallel connection, the electric current will split, while the voltage across all the resistors will be the same. And again, the electric current here will split based on the resistance value. The bigger the resistance value, the smaller the current, because current and resistance are inversely proportional when the voltage is set constant. Uh, another thing uh, we need to discuss is what will happen to the electric circuit if one of the resistors stop working? Will it still operate? Would those light bulbs still shine? Or would they stop working? Let's assume, for example, this light bulb went bad. What do you think will happen to the electric circuit? So let me cut it here. As you can see here, the whole circuit stopped working. So if one component stopped functioning, all the other components will stop functioning as well. That's the case with the series connection. Let's see if we have the same problem with the parallel connection. Let's again cut one of the light bulbs. So let's cut this one, for example. Now you can see this one stopped working while the other two are still operating. If we cut this one, for example, also, those two stopped working, but this one is still operating. So actually, in the case of parallel connection, one electric bulb going bad or being disconnected will not impact the other resistors. They will still operate. And that's why we use parallel connection in our homes. In our homes, we need to be able to turn off the toaster, we need to be able to turn off a light bulb in a certain room without impacting the other light bulbs and the other appliances in the other rooms. So we have connection in parallel in our home. And we get one voltage, which is 110 volts from the electric company. Serious connections, we see it in the old uh, Christmas lights. If one of the lights went bad, it will impact all the other light bulbs. In the new Christmas lights, we have shunt resistors, meaning you have connection in parallel across each resistor, so that if one light bulb went bad, the electric current will overpass it to the second light bulb and so on. Okay, so that achieved our objectives with regard to series versus parallel connection. You need to be able to address those uh, three questions in the lessons objectives.